off the holiday season. How else you got in the spirit last night? Plus, a Broadway star touched down in Syracuse. How she's making her voice heard in more ways than one. And as you officially welcomed Fran Brown as the school's 31st football coach, we'll break down this historic day on News Live at 6. It all starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Holidays at Hendricks concert. Welcome into News Live at 6. I'm Nicole Laponte. And I'm Peyton Spellacy. Our reporter Anjana Dassam was at the concert yesterday and is in studio now to tell us more about the community's reaction to the celebration. Anjana? Eager to come and watch the festive concert. The concert was brought together by the Hendricks Chapel Choir, the Setner School of Music at Syracuse, and its artistic director, Pepe Calver. The chapel handed out pamphlets and candles for audience members to hold, making every person in the chapel be a part of making the concert a wholesome experience. One family explains why they are most looking forward to the event. And I think, most of all, it's a peaceful uh, setting. And I think right now, peace is something that everybody's striving for and, and wanting to feel. ongoing tradition of an event featured about six different student-centered performances. With months of preparation, Calver says that he hopes this concert can inspire the audience and performers. He shows his appreciation to the support and turnout of this concert. There's so much planning. In fact, there's 18 months worth of planning and that's a real challenge. But we, you know, we, we love it. We have lots of help and lots of support from so many people on our faculty, so many people on our staff, so many people in our university family. And uh, you know, this is a, a great turnout by our Orange family and I think that, uh, that it means a great deal to people. The chapel was also filled with more than just audience and performers, but many volunteers that came to support the organizers. They were seating the audience, handing out candles, and keeping the sold-out event organized. The volunteers say that they believe in what the chapel stands for and bringing people together, especially during the holidays. This place is like home to me. I'm not particularly religious myself, but I've always loved this building, what it stands for, unity and my community. If you missed out on the in-person concert yesterday, the recorded virtual concert will premiere December 11th at 7 p.m. For more information on this event, you can visit chapel.syracuse.edu. That's all I have for now. Guys, I'll send it back over to you. What a great event, Anjana. Thanks so much. Well, the federal court has reopened part of a woman's lawsuit against Syracuse University. The lawsuit accuses SU of violating Title IX rules while dealing with a top athlete's violent behavior towards her. The lawsuit was originally filed back in 2021 on the university's handling of a case against lacrosse player Chase Scanlon. The woman was in a relationship with him that she says turned abusive. The lawsuit alleges SU showed indifference to a victim of domestic violence. Well, turning to our first look at our weather, it's winter, and yep. I'm not happy about it. This weather, it's been so rainy and drear for days yes, now. Yes, it definitely feels like, you know, I'm from Sacramento, not used to this weather. <laughs> you know who else is from Sacramento? Our weather anchor, Nico Horning. He's outside. Nico, we're not used to this weather. How's it feeling <laughs> out there? Hey, thanks guys. It is a, uh, it's a chilly one out here outside the Citrus TV studios. Those temperatures are still a little bit warmer than those, uh, those snowflakes right now. It's 37 degrees in Syracuse. It's cloudy and the winds are still relevant, but it's not exactly snowing yet. As you get a look behind me, just some raindrops, some light rain. We expect that to change over into snow uh, tonight as we get a look at our current temperatures across the region right now in central New York. It is 39. Uh, down south in Ithaca, 40 in Binghamton. We go up north, 36 in Fulton, 36 in Rome, and out to our west, 36 degrees in Rochester. As we take a look into our weather tonight, it'll be 32 degrees once again dropping. We expect some snow overnight. Not much in the way of accumulation, but that'll change more uh, as we get into tomorrow. I'll have more a little bit later on, but for now, guys, back to you. 
Nico, thank you. Syracuse's Big Brother and Big Sister programs has started celebrating the holidays. They hosted face painting, games, and a magician yesterday for all members. The program is still accepting applications from volunteers to be mentors. The process matches each mentor with a mentee of similar interests. Broadway performer Carrie Malakanos visited her hometown of Syracuse last week and gave a live performance to those attending the Everson Art Museum. However, she's providing more to the community than just simple entertainment. Citrus TV reporter Tyler O'Donnell joins us live from the Everson Art Museum tonight. Tyler, how is she helping the next generation of performers? She's helping it a lot. She's actually been holding a wonderful, uh, excuse me, a wonderful workshop for a lot of the vocalists here in the Syracuse area. Now she's done a lot of vocal performances often around the Great White Way of Broadway, but this week she's playing a bit of a different role than, excuse me, last week she played a bit of a different role than normal, the role of teacher. On Saturday, the voice of Broadway singer Carrie Minalakis reverberated throughout the auditorium in Everson Art Museum. Earlier in the same auditorium, though, her voice was used not to perform, but to teach. During a visit to her home city of Syracuse, Minalakis held vocal workshops for local students at Everson Art Museum, helping them learn a variety of ways to improve their singing and musical expression. Minalakis says that short classes like these help show students ways to improve beyond their time with her and how to take these skills throughout their life. You know, that's one of the reasons why I love this instrument so much is because, you know, it's, you can constantly be working at it and the benefits are not just in the practice of singing, they're the benefits follow through to the practice of life. For some students, the class goes beyond just improving their skills. Syracuse University student Lauren Schwears believes that working with Manilakos gives her a glimpse of singing beyond college. I saw with Carrie that the skills I'm learning in class really carry beyond the classroom and potentially all the way into my professional career. For others like Sabine Concepcion, the workshop provides them a sense of community. Concepcion says that working with Manilakis helped connect her with those who share her passion for singing. I think it was just really cool, you know, just seeing people, li seeing people like you, seeing people who have, have your same interests. I feel like you just kind of click right away. The connection aspect holds especially true for not just the students, but for Manilakos as well, who says that teaching others is now one of the core aspects of her music life. As I've been moving into this direction, it's been really great for me to not only myself really stand my ground in the work that I'm creating and being with people and in performing, but in also helping to guide others in sharing their gifts with others with a peaceful heart, a calm mind, and a clear vision. If you want to hear more about Carrie Menelakos' work, you can visit her website at www.carriemenelakos.com. Reporting from Everson Art Museum, I'm Tyler Aldano, Citrus TV News. What an awesome experience, Tyler. Thank you. A popular central New York wedding venue has closed. Awera Vineyards canceled all events scheduled for 2024. The co-owner of Awero says the business will attempt to find replacement venues for people affected by the cancellations. The property of the property has an event space as well as a winery. The, vin the vineyard has opened an application to construct a permanent building in place of their tent. It is currently unknown what the town's planning board plans to do with the nearly 58 acres alongside the Casanova Lake. Plans to turn a former hotel in Salina into senior apartments have fallen through. The former Holiday Inn was closed last year to build over 100 apartments for senior housing. The building plans called for a renovation complete with a restaurant, hair salon, and retail shops. The hotel was owned by First Republic, who was recalled, who has recalled their deal to sell. However, county property records show First Republic still owns the building. And an elementary school in Auburn is closed today due to a water main break. KC Park Elementary School was alerted this morning. The break was on a line into the building. The district is working with a private company to make necessary repairs. The closure of the Park Elementary School is not affecting other schools in the district. 
But New York State minimum wage is set to rise across the state starting in the new year. The wage will increase to $16 an hour in Westchester, Nassau, and Suffolk counties, along with New York City. In the rest of the state, though, it'll raise to $15 an hour. The rise will provide an extra $32 a week for full-time workers in minimum wage jobs. Following the increase, though, there will be a hike of $0.50 cents an hour in 2025 and 2026. Coming up on News Live at 6, changes in a local Senate seat. We'll have an exclusive interview with a candidate running. Plus an update on the Israel-Hamas conflict, how Gaza is upping its operations. Ahead on Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! You're watching Citrus TV News Live at 6 with Peyton Spellacy, Nicole Laponte, and Lauren Holdmeyer. Now, your campus news leader continues. Back to News Live at 6, Republican candidate Jim Rowley has ended his campaign for New York State Senate's 50th district seat. The seat is currently occupied by State Senator John Mannion, but will be vacated at the end of 2024. Rowley cited the quote, free fall the county GOP is in for his decision. His announcement came just days after Republican Nick Paro announced he would run for the seat. Here to tell us more about Paro is our political reporter, Luke Radel. Hey, Luke. Hey there, guys. Salina Town Supervisor Nick Perro is hoping that the people of State Senate District 50 send him to Albany next year. Here's a clip from his campaign launch video. I'm Nick Perro. I'm running for New York State Senate because we need change. And I have a plan. I fought for the people of Salina. And as your state senator, Central New York's voice will ring through the halls of Albany. And Nick Perro joins me now. Mr. Town Supervisor, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Now, talk to me. That video, flipping burgers and dogs as you announce your campaign, that's got to be the most quintessentially American thing I have ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's yeah. pretty great. Uh, talk to me a little bit about why you're running uh, for New York State Senate. Exactly what the line just said. We need change. New York State government has, uh, ha has evolved in something that it wasn't just only a few years before, right? So you have a Democrat supermajority now, and um, they've put through their pet policies. Now they're looking to consolidate power and extend it for many generations going forward, and this is our only opportunity to really stop them. Initially, when you launched just a couple of days ago, you had a GOP primary opponent. As I mentioned, Mr. Raleigh has since dropped out of the race. What was your reaction to him dropping out so soon after your entry? Uh, 
I think it shows that I have a lot of support within the Republican committee, the Republican constituents themselves within the district. It's extremely encouraging, right? Uh, I have a lot of respect for Jim. Jim's been a long time uh, legislator or supervisor. He's been involved for, for many years. He's been able to accomplish a lot. But again, you know, I'm a younger person. I've been able to get elected twice in a very Democrat town, and I think a lot of people saw that. And a thanks to Mr. Perra for giving us his first TV interview as a candidate. You can watch our full conversation later tonight on a wide variety of issues on the Citrus TV YouTube channel. Nicole and Peyton, back over to you guys. Thanks, Luke. 11 climbers have died and a dozen are missing in Indonesia after the eruption of the Mount Marapi volcano in the West Sumatra province. 75 people have been evacuated since the volcano erupted on Sunday. Evacuations are still underway with 40 rescuers currently on the mountain. Following the eruptions, authorities have stopped all activities within two miles of Marapi's crater. Officials are warning that molten lava from the eruption could reach roads and nearby rivers. Climbing routes and trails have also been closed. The UN says more than 80% of Gazans have been displaced since the Israel-Hamas war began. A large majority are sheltering in facilities in central and in South Gaza. The director of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees says they expect another wave of displacement as operations in Gaza ramp up. The IDF say its troops in border police have killed two suspects militants overnight. 29 suspects have been apprehended in the West Bank with over 200 Palestinians killed in the area. And after the break, we'll have our weather and uh, take a look at our, our slow start to the snow season. More on that after the break. Stay tuned here on News Live at 6. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome to my house. Lately, not my happy place. Everybody's pretty tired of each other. The parents were not themselves. My little brothers were morphing into small creatures. The walls were closing in. Clearly a case of too much family, too close, 24-7. And there's a lot of that going around right now. If this sounds like your house, try going someplace new. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. You'll find lots of ideas to help you handle the family stresses of being confined to close quarters. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. It might not get you out of the house, but it could help you find a little more breathing room. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back to News Live at 6. I'm Nico Horning, your weather anchor. A little cool today, but it's going to be a bit cooler tomorrow, uh, despite some snow tonight. None of it will accumulate, but I want to get you ready for your uh, forecast tomorrow. It'll be less windy than it was today, but again, 34 degrees in the morning. It'll be another dreary day here in Syracuse. Hopefully some sun into the weekend. We'll get into that in a minute. But I want to go ahead and highlight our snowfall averages that we've seen so far this year. We had six inches last Tuesday during that storm. It sort of saved November or else we would be basically at zero inches a month into the snow season here in Syracuse. We had 65 inches total last year and the average of Syracuse this time of year is double that. So just wanted to sort of highlight that the average for December is 31 inches. So we do have 31 inches to go the rest of the month. We'll see if we do get a white Christmas or not. I want, uh, and then as far as our five day forecast that is happening uh, 36 degrees tomorrow, 33 on Wednesday. That'll sort of uh, extended to get a little bit higher going into the end of the week and hopefully the the sun will peak out Friday and Saturday and uh, maybe a, a bit of sunshine maybe get out walk your dogs whatever you'd like to do that does it for me for weather I'm gonna go to uh, Luke and uh, Luke we got a new sorry I'm gonna go back to uh, Peyton and Nicole guys 
Nico, thank you. It's officially a new era for Syracuse football. Fran Brown is here, and tonight Central New Yorkers are sharing their opinions. Our John Parrick reports. A touchdown for Syracuse. There's no reason not to be excited. I think he brings a lot to the table. My expectations are is that I don't have expectations. From the dogs to the orange, SU today welcoming Fran Brown as its new football head coach. And everyone's got an opinion. If he can recruit people that can put up with the Syracuse winner, sure, spot on. He'll get a lot of people. But Syracuse is a rough winner, and I think that's a gauge for a lot of reason why we don't get good prospects here. Him coming from the south and coming from football country, I think that he can absolutely bring a lot of energy up here that can only move us forward. I want to be optimistic about that. Coined as the nation's top recruiter, Fran Brown today saying he's ready to turn Syracuse football back into a powerhouse. The reason you should come to Syracuse is because just because you come here, you're going to be successful for the rest of your life. Like I just held up a jersey with Tim Brantley's number on it. I'm going to be an animal at practice. I told the guys yesterday, nobody here has more energy than me. I never stop. And some Syracuse fans can already sense it. Just ask SU alum Chris Velarde. It's an energy and a buzz and a feeling that like, all right, we've got something to look forward to. We've got some excitement. Awesome stuff. John Perrick, thank you. Luke, what else do we have in sports tonight? Thanks a lot, Peyton. Thanks a lot, Peyton. Things did not go according to plan for Syracuse men's basketball over the weekend. More on the ACC opener after the break. Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the back. We're in the back. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. There were some record-setting moments in the ACC opener for Syracuse men's basketball. Unfortunately for the Cuse, none of them helped it get a win. Welcome to sports, I'm Luke Burgess. SU took an early December trip to Charlottesville looking to break up an impressive streak. In 14 years at the head of the bench, Virginia's Tony Bennett is undefeated in ACC openers. SU's three-point shooting dropped down to 25% from over 50 against LSU. On the other side of the floor, Isaac McNeely had some stretches where he actually couldn't miss. The sophomore had a career-high 22 points in just 26 minutes. That, along with double digits from Reese Beekman and Andrew Rode, led the Cavaliers to that 15th ACC opening win under Coach Bennett. Pretty quiet day for Judah Mintz after he had over 30 points against LSU earlier in the week. On a positive note, double digits for Malik Brown off the bench. If he can do that consistently going forward, it could pay dividends for this SU squad. 
to a team that has been not been struggling rather to pick up wins. SU women's basketball back in action in less than an hour in the Dome. Northeastern in town tonight. Cuse freshman Alyssa Latham had 23 points last time out against Alabama. And just a few hours ago, she was named ACC Freshman of the Week. Big honor for the Illinois native. Deja Fair also had 20 points despite missing some of the second half of the previous game with a leg injury. The Knicks just snuck into the knockout rounds of the NBA in-season tournament. They've been hot after a middling start. New York has wins in seven of its last nine games. Florida State trying to make a bid into the college football playoff. Unfortunately for them, that's not as easy as, well, going undefeated. The Seminoles finished the season 13-0 with an ACC championship as well. However, because of an injury to starting QB Jordan Travis three weeks ago, the committee decided that FSU was not one of the best four teams in the nation. Many have spoken out, including the chairman of the ACC, head coach Mike Norvell, and even one of Florida's senators all making their complaints heard. Important to note that this is the first time in CFP history that an undefeated Power 5 team has been excluded. The teams we will see in the playoff are Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama from 1-4. to four. The Wolverines face the Crimson Tide in the Rose Bowl while the Huskies take on the Longhorns in the Sugar Bowl. Both of those semifinal games are set to take place in the new year. Look, it was a big historic day for Central New York today. Fran Brown, 31st football coach of Syracuse University. Are you excited about this? What do you think his era will be like here? Absolutely. There's a lot to look forward to with Fran Brown coming from Georgia, which has you know so much recruiting prestige, and he was ranked as the number one recruiter in the country. Now, you've also got rumors for a Texas A&M coordinator coming in, so he's already fleshing out his staff, and he's doing it with guys who have reputations as great recruiters. I think... You know, people in the 315 have a lot to be excited about with Syracuse football. Syracuse basketball season is underway. Not maybe the best start that we would have <laughs> hoped for, but a lot to look forward to on the football front for sure. And more um, on college football, Florida State, you know, a big team was left out. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, this extends a little bit out of my uh, department, I guess you could say, into the news side. I mean, we're, got, we're getting senators. I mentioned earlier, Florida's senator has, you know, written a letter to the ACC and to the college football uh, selection committee about his displeasure with how the selection process has gone. And, it's an interesting turn of events. We've never seen an undefeated team that has won in the Power Five, uh, won their conference, I mean, go on and miss the playoffs. So I think it's disappointing for those Florida State fans. You've also seen the ACC pretty outraged. And this kind of stems back to Syracuse as well. Syracuse, another team in the ACC, trying to make the playoff. And I think just the overall, the conference feels a whole lot of disrespect right now. Well, Luke, thanks so much. When we come back, we have one last look at weather. Stay with us. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay in. Fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Back here on News Live at 6. Let's get your wake-up weather uh, for tomorrow. It'll be 33 degrees in the morning if you're heading out to a Tuesday morning class. Be sure to bundle up a little bit. Less windy than this morning but that wind will still be present. And we're hoping for, you know, some sun to come out at the end of the week, guys. Really uh, a lot of clouds and just kind of misty weather. It was even foggy the other day here in Syracuse. So maybe some, uh, some snow, but hopefully some sun later in the week. Oh, wow. Well, look, 33 degrees, hopefully some sun. I'm praying for it at all. Well, 
Everyone, general please, I know it's the time we're all waiting for. Oxford University Press has announced their word of the year, and I couldn't have guessed this, it's Riz. So Oxford Press said that Riz could be style or attractiveness. It's the ability to, you know, attract a romantic partner. Oh. I was first introduced this word by um, Jake Morrell, yep, a citrus that's TV exactly member. exactly I think of too. <laughs> um, it's a charisma. It's like the charisma you have with someone. I don't. I don't think I have. Charisma. Maybe charisma will oh, come you. on. No. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, that's it for TV News Live at 6 for this Monday. Don't forget, you can follow us on X. I'm Peyton Spellacy. And I'm Nicola Ponte. Have a great night, Syracuse.